Next up, we want to welcome Assembly Member Mark Levine. I believe Mark is in the house. Good to see you here. Yeah, there he is. Hi, Mark. So let's give Mark a warm welcome. He's going to update us on the legislation he's involved in and talk to his constituents. Yay! Welcome, Mark. Glad to be here. Thank you, everyone who's here finding a little bit of shade and uh, um, could be here to hear a little bit of an update about some of my legislation. I've got uh, one bill which essentially started out with my concern for fracking. But what I realized as we were looking at what was going on in California, the rush to exploit perhaps the Monterey Shale is that fracking is just one small part of well stimulation. And so for example, there's a, a phrase that I've never heard of until just uh, a few months ago called acid matrix stimulation. It sounds like a sci-fi movie, but this is um, one part of what well stimulation, one technique of well stimulation. And you heard from the speakers before about the, the lack of regulations. They had talked about Dogger, uh, which is supposed to regulate oil drilling. This, let me tell you about my journey on this issue. So, you know, if we were to ask the state of California how many wells have been fracked, they wouldn't be able to tell you because there are no regulations on fracking. And I heard some uh, lobbyists from the, uh, the oil industry come in and actually speak to legislators and describe fracking as uh, water, um, air, and a bunch of other stuff. And so if that doesn't raise some alarm bells, um, you know, right, we did a little bit of digging about, you know, what do we regulate? And essentially, if you want to drill a well in California, you apply to Dogger, they have 10 days to, uh, to approve or deny the request. If you do not hear back in 10 days, it is presumed approved. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought too. And, uh, and there's, of course, no permit fee. And so I come from a city council experience where if you want to remodel your house, maybe put on an addition, you apply, um, you pay for the review of that permit, it, you actually pay for um, the city to do that review. And why is that? Because taxpayers otherwise would be footing the bill for you uh, to have your, your work reviewed. And I think that the same thing should be done in the oil industry, um, that they should be paying for those permits to be reviewed. Uh, but So that's just kind of where we started out. We also looked at the mission of Dogger, which has a, a dual mission. One is one that's public health related. The other one is for um, ensuring the extraction of, uh, of hydrocarbons. And it's kind of a dual role. So I got concerned about, well, how can you really balance the interests of public health as well as um, getting, getting the most out of the ground? And I don't find that to be compatible. And then we, we began with the statement that so many oil companies have made, whether it's Halliburton or BP, about that fracking is safe. And one executive even said, it tastes like beer. And, uh, and so, you know, what we've seen in legislation in years past is that legislation focusing on disclosure in California has failed, and regulations focusing on a, specifically a moratorium has also failed. But I wanted to hold the oil industry to their word about whether or not it's safe. So we partnered with the Environmental Working Group, a very well-respected, uh, association in Sacramento uh, and others. Uh, essentially, I have the entire environmental um, movement behind my bill, uh, AB 288, and thought, well, how do we take the oil industry's words and use it against them? And we determined that the way to do it is to say, you know, let's change the mission of Dogger, let's make public health its number one priority, it doesn't compete with anything else. Let's create a regulatory environment uh, that would make the oil industry pay for what they want to do for their review. And then 
what I believe was a stroke of genius, not on my part, but on the part of the environmental working group that's been an incredible partner to me on this, on this legislation. Let's make them prove it's safe. So they say it's safe, let's make them prove it. And we almost, in our legislation, let them figure out how to prove it, which I was concerned about. There, this, this bill is such a threat to the oil industry that it landed me on the California Chamber of Commerce's job killer list. So they are themselves admitting that they can't prove it's safe, which is exactly what we wanted to get them to do, to admit it. And, uh, and so, you know, it, I, I almost would have said, well, it's not a moratorium, you know, it's not finding out what's in there. Maybe, you know, is this really going to get what we need? And already it's pretty much got them shaking in their boots because they can't, they can't prove what, uh, what we're trying to do. And so it's trying to take another route, uh, an avenue to make sure that people understand the dangers to California, if the if the Monterey Shale is uh, is uh, trying to get tapped through broader well stimulation, um, not just fracking itself. I've got a couple other bills that I want to mention before I wrap up. The first is, of course, my plastic bag ban, which was approved by the Natural Resources Committee a couple of weeks ago. Thank you. I, my, my well stimulation. Uh, ban essentially is uh, was also approved through natural resources. I also have a bill that gives companies with a good environmental record a leg up in state contracting. So if you're a company that's doing good things, and the state actually has a way of measuring this, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, and you're bidding with against another company, and your bid is within 3%, you get the contract. And so there are 7,000 of the types of contracts I'm focus on, focusing on, 7,000 contracts like this. We did our homework there. Of those 7,000, 171 were within 3%. Um, where I really want to go with this data, and I love data, what would our footprint be like if we had an environmental alternative in those 171 contracts? How could the state reduce its carbon footprint? And so we're digging down on the data, trying to find that out. And uh, what I'm really proud of, the Republican caucus had a, I'm not proud that they had an opposed position on it. I got all but one of the Republican members on that committee to actually vote uh, for this bill. And, <laughs> and of course I had all the Democrats, but I spoke to the Republicans about this. I, I went to them one by one. Um, just respected them for who they are as legislators, explained to them the impacts that this could have on California, that California businesses are the ones who are greener than other businesses, and California businesses would then have a leg up, essentially, uh, because of this. And they understand, um, you know, that green, you know, can also mean money in, uh, in that for California businesses, and, and that was a way to um, encourage them to kind of find a way to be relevant in the discussion. And, uh, and so I'm trying to find ways to make sure that if green can be a bipartisan issue. On the issue like fracking, it's been um, essentially Democrats who have not been a way to find consensus, have not found a way to find consensus. And so, you know, we've got Democrats, here we are in Marin, 4% unemployment. Um, it's a different story in Kern County, where the oil industry is, and where we do have Democrats representing some districts. And so there's a lot of work to be done uh, to educate even the, within the Democratic community uh, about why the environment should be a priority for all of us, and that the green economy is one that, uh, that we should be investing in uh, for our long-term sustainability and success. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Mark. And remember, we have to really support our electeds like Mark, who are sticking their necks out there and are also reaching across the aisle because everybody in their heart, whether a Democrat or Republican, we want to make sure that we keep this place safe for our children and our grandchildren. And I think that it's really important that people like Mark have our support, have our voices, so that we have your back when you're doing this work. So thank you.